Uh, did you get what you were kind of envisioning out of last weekend, having both uh, Deritter and Helston in there? Yeah, and that was the plan going forward. Obviously, you know, you never know until you, you know, finish Friday and then get into Saturday what your lineup looks like, you know, because of maybe injuries or sickness or whatever. But at the end of the day, yeah, that was the plan going forward, and I'm glad we got both guys in. Got, got in. They they both played very solid, and uh, you know now it's another weekend here where we're going to determine you know our lineup going forward here on Friday. Seven grad students on Quinnipiac. How do you kind of hope to capitalize on this third veteranship? Well, we have our own experience too. You know, like I, I think it's a situation where you know Sendon and Hain came back for fifth year. We've got you know uh, some older guys in our group as well, and I think that's what you're going to see you know around the country with you know uh, teams infusing experience from year to year and. Um, you know, they do have some experience, but so do we. And I think it's two teams that, you know, have a high compete level that uh, you saw last year for, for a fact that it was a good series and the fact that, uh, you know, nothing was left on the ice. Everybody poured it out. Jamernick had just kind of said that last year against Quinnipiac was almost kind of a wake-up call series. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think it kind of opened our eyes a little bit for sure. You know, uh, we, we knew what we were dealing with going in there. Like, you know, the week of preparation before I thought was very good. But until you get in those games, I think it, it doesn't uh, probably resonate until the first period and, and know what you're dealing with. And uh, and, and we, we had 14 new guys in our group, right? So again, they didn't know what to expect, uh, verbally telling them. But once we physically got in the game, it was like, man, we got to be better. And, and I don't think we played our best. Give it to uh, Quinnipiac. They did. They, I thought they played outstanding you know, through the whole weekend. But we didn't play our best on Friday night. And uh, it was a tough morning on Saturday. You know, There was some self-realization from players and coaches that we all have to be better and uh, accountability on our part. And uh, I got to hand it to our guys. They responded well. That was a tough game on Saturday night to get the split. And, uh, and, and they answered the bell. Obviously, it was a few years ago since that national title, but you played last year. They were ranked this year. You guys are both ranked again. Do you kind of see it as a rivalry in the way? Well, you know what? Again, they're a team from out east. We're from the west. We don't see each other a whole lot, but we did in the 15 regional and then in the Frozen 4 and 16. And then obviously now, you know, we're, we've had back-to-back -back series. So we see a little bit more of each other. But, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, continually a team that's going to be at the top from out east. And hopefully we, we are in the west each and every year. And, and it's great to see that, you know, two teams that put a lot of pride and emphasis on not only uh, uh, development, but winning games. Uh, and, and again, it's a situation where I think it's going to make both teams better after this weekend. What do you remember most about that 2016 title against them? Yeah, well, again, they were, I think they only lost three games all year. And I think we had only lost five or six that year. And, uh, you know, two very good teams that had a lot of success. And, you know, it was a battle for the first period and a half, two periods. And, and then we ended up scoring a couple of goals uh, kind of later in the game to kind of push it over. But, you know, there was a lot of skill level on both teams, a lot of experience on both teams. And it was a situation where, you know, we were hungry to, to try to hang that eighth banner. And, and now uh, here we go, here we are again. I mean, it's, a, it's early in the season. But, again, who knows what happens at the end of the season. Season if we if we have fortunate enough to meet up again. And what made that team so special in 2016 for you? Well, I think we had a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, we we had experienced guys. When you think of the the Pullmans and the uh, the Ledoux's and and Auspices and some of the older guys on that team, but and then we had some young skill on our team as well. So you know, I think we had a little bit of everything. Uh, Drake Cajula was a big part of that, playing with Schmaltz and Besser on that line. But we had we had we had skill, but we had experience too. And just how much does that like historical aspect kind of factor when you're making the schedule? Just the fact that you're playing for the PAC again. Well, what we tried, somebody asked me that yesterday. They said, you know, obviously you have the choice, you know, years in advance to build your non-conference schedule. And, and when we feel we want the majority of our games against strong teams like Quinnipiac, you know, uh, you know we always feel, say that, you know, whether it's in practice, you know, playing against each other or you're playing against very good teams, that iron sharpens iron. It, it makes you sharper if you play against really good teams. And, and that's part of it, too. Obviously, non-conference, uh, the pairwise is a big deal. But you know, if you're fortunate enough to win those games, it absolutely helps you uh, in the pairwise. We talked a little bit last week about you know trying to find the chemistry between the lines as well to put some wins together this past weekend. Do you kind of feel like it was a mission accomplished there, finding the chemistry, you know, uh, with, with the guys on the line? Yeah, you know what? I think we found a little bit of body of work, um, you know, going forward here. Uh, we are still continually looking here. It's still early on, and you know whether that's uh, five on five or power play. Just trying to bounce guys in and out to, to see if we can finally get you know something that everybody's comfortable with and uh, and you know we tried a few different lines this weekend uh, this week at practice here that you know we're going to try out for the weekend. So ranked team this weekend and then another uh, couple of other big games after that. Uh, kind of what, what's your message to these guys as you head into this? 
Tough opening stretch of the year. Take care of Friday. Just just concentrate on Friday. Like I think everybody, you know, there's talking about the Minnesota weekend down down in uh, Minneapolis, talking about the Hall of Fame game against ASU. That's all fine and dandy, but like for us, my, our message on Monday morning coming in here, you had a, you had a solid start to the season, but we played at home, right? Uh, this is the last two games of our homestand, then we go on the road for the next three weeks. Let's concentrate on the finishing the right way on part of the homestand, and then when Monday comes, we'll deal with Monday. But to us, Friday night is, is our focus, and our guys had some really good practices here leading up to it. Brad, is this going to be special teams weekend? Oh, yeah, huge. Huge. They got an outstanding power play. Ours is good too, but they they have a power play that, you know, they've scored the majority of their goals on the power play in the first four games here. And they they like to get up and go on five on five transition. They like to bring it. You know, any turnovers they're going on offense, but especially if you give them a lot of chances on the power play, they have some skilled players that move it around pretty good. You played in last year, you probably watched a little bit this year. What uh, they don't allow a lot of shots for their opponents, it seems like last year and, and starting this year. What do they do to I think pressuring pucks, you know, like I think that's a staple of our game. Our identity is tracking to the puck and, and making sure there's not a lot of time and space. And a lot of teams do it, but, you know, they, they, they'll have one man pressure, then there'll be another guy coming at you. So you got to make that next play early, which kind of inhibits you from getting into the offensive zone if you're not sharp. So again, for us, is making sure that we get through there, uh, get into the offensive zone and, and, and protect pucks, be hard on pucks. And you know, we always talk about 50-50 battles. When there's a puck, you lay in there and it's between me and the other guy, I want to come out with it the majority of the time. You have to have that mentality of making sure you own that puck. And I think that's all part of it. What did you guys see? Ryan Sidorsky goes in the transfer portal. What did you like about him? Why did you guys? Uh... Yeah, very smart defenseman, bigger body, right shot, you know, all those things that we needed in our group this year. And, and uh, you know, uh, he, he, has, he has very good ability, good feet, and he defends very well. And, uh, and, and, and the other part that checks the box for us is he brings experience. Um, you know, he played in, in, in Union and he played a lot, and, and he brings uh, experience to your group here. And I think when you have a decor, you always like to have guys that, that have played a little bit, you know, underneath them a little bit to give you. I guess some some certainty on the back end, and and, and we needed a couple guys. Like uh, at the end of the day, we needed a couple guys to come in and help us there. He's you know Union. You guys don't really play. It's uh, he's from out east. Was, did, were you guys familiar with him, or did you do some homework on him when you saw his name? In? Yeah, when we saw his name, and then I think the first thing you do is you know you look at Instat and, and go to his games and watch. Obviously, we didn't have a lot of live viewings. Didn't have any live viewings on him. But you go to Instat, and then the next thing is you call former coaches. And then, uh, and then you you talk to him and build a relationship to to kind of pull back the layers. And you know he's an outstanding young man. You know enough has to be said about you know his 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 work ethic. He went, he worked on Wall Street this summer, interning with uh, RBC Wealth Management to to try to. Uh, uh, he had that in place for two years, and uh, you know he has a focus. He's he's mature and uh, he's an outstanding person, uh, and his a character is impeccable. Summer, so he had to say, "Hey, can I do this?" Uh, yeah, and he, what was your yeah, and you know, it was one of those things. When I asked him that question, I said, "You know, obviously, it, it's it's voluntary. It's not mandatory. Would you would be open on doing?" It? He goes, "Yeah, I would in a heartbeat." But I I got this set up for two years uh, to work on Wall Street. That's the last part of my internship, and you know, and I said, "I can't turn that back." You know, I mean, I can't say no. Like at the end of the day, it's voluntary, right? I can't say you're coming, but. I think he felt bad about it, but at the end of the day, he did his workouts. He, he, he skated as much as he could. He worked out every day, and I thought he came in in really good shape. With the transfer portal and a lot of new players going in and out, do you like that new aspect of college hockey? Uh, I don't know. Like it, we've benefited, I think you know, over the last couple of years from it. But you know, where where players leave or come in, I think it gives them an opportunity. I think obviously it's for the mostly for the student athlete. It does help out our program. It, sometimes it doesn't help programs uh, players leaving. But um, I, I think it gives the, the student athlete a benefit of trying to find a place where they, they have an opportunity or it's a good fit for them. So I guess it, it, me saying, yeah, it's helped us and I think it's been beneficial. But at the end of the day, I always go back to trying to, you know, staying within your group for your length of time, uh, you know, in your group and just, you know, if there's adversity, dig through it. And, and, and it's a situation where if you get through the adversity, because there's usually good times on the other side of it, there are situations where it's not going to work out where players have to leave, and, and I get that as well. So I'm probably 50-50 on it. All right, yep. Thanks,